I love the fact that we're doing A Wrinkle in Time here at OSF. I read the book when I was a kid, and I, I remember it distinctly. Um, I, think, I think it might have been the first novel I read when I was a kid, it was A Wrinkle in Time. I, I read it when I was 10 and loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, I looked exactly like Meg Murray was described when I was 10, you know, a little younger than she was, but, uh, but I had the braces and the glasses and the hair that just like didn't understand, I didn't know what to do with it. And uh, So in that respect, I was very much like, whoa, cool, just like me. I never read the book as a child. I don't think I even had heard of it. I knew nothing about it. And in fact, when I heard they were doing it here, I was like, I have no interest in science fiction-y, time travel-y, anything. Well, I read the book over and over again when I was a kid. I think it probably came my way when I was maybe 12, I'm not sure. Um, but I had an immediate emotional response to it. The character of Meg loves her father and worships her father so much and that was my end to the book. I also loved my father, worshipped my father, so that relationship was so strong for me, particularly because the father had disappeared. And it really terrified me, because I thought, oh my gosh, how could the most important person in your life, who gives you complete, unconditional love, comfort, that feeling of safety, be gone with no explanation, and the whole town is talking about what a horrible person he is, how do you live through that? How do you recover from that? And, and as everybody always says, it's the not knowing. And so her journey um, to go and try to find him and find out what happened is so, just really resonated with me really strongly. The thing that popped out to me the most when I was a kid was the idea that your faults make you who you are and um, can be embraced and can be a good thing actually. The things that make you different, the things you hate about yourself because they set you off from people are the things that make you special and are enable you to do good in the world and have a dif make a difference. When I read it, I was really deeply engrossed and riveted to the story. What moved me about it was those three children discovering themselves, finding love, what is family, what is friendship, who are, who are we as people, and the, the fact that the the protagonist is a you know a preteen girl superstar outsider it's so moving to me. I love the fact that there are people who were never going to read the book who are now going to be exposed to this story, uh, and in a great way. And we are honoring that story while at the same time honoring what theater does best. Um, which is shows you something but also encourages you to use your imagination um, which the book also does and we we are able to do that better than any movie ever could well I read the book and I thought I have no idea how Tracy is going to adapt this and make this into an engaging enchanting magical theater piece I it seemed impossible and I like many people thought it can't be done there's no I don't know what the in is to making that a theatrical endeavor. Um, and I think luckily that's why you have Tracy Young direct a play like this. She sort of took the idea of the reader or readers of A Wrinkle in Time, someone like Mark Bedard who's a super fan, or me who had no connection with it. How does a reader connect to the story in their own lives and then how do these readers then become characters in the book? And I, that was so exciting. And there was also that fear of, I love this story, I love these characters, what if it doesn't work? What if it's not done well? I'm going to be really disappointed because I feel a responsibility to many aspects of it, to the book, to myself, to my son who is 14 years old, who is reading the book, um, to the people in the audience. You, in, you want to be able to bring something that you're really proud of, especially if you've had a deep connection to it in the past. You can tell um, that people who are big fans of the book are responding to things that they remember and things that they love. Um, like when uh, we come out to bounce the balls uh, as the Kamazots boys, um, I've heard people go, oh yeah, you know, I've heard people say stuff like that. Or when Aunt Beast comes out or says certain lines, people remember not only the character but things the character says. And those are in there for people who love the book. There are certain lines that 
your braces are really sparkly in this moonlight that it's like, oh wow, yeah, people think that's really funny, <laughs> okay? The topo, John Topo becomes the dog. And then it was like, oh God, that is a hit every time. Seeing Fort and Brass, I think people that know the book are like, oh my God, we're seeing Fort and Brass, the dog, you know? And it's coming from a guy with a beret on. And um, so that's really exciting. And I read this book I, hundreds of times when I was a kid, but I guess I would sort of like skip past the parts that, you know, oh, it's math, it's science, I can't. But now that I hear it over and over and over again, not only do I want to understand it, but the fact that there's a visual to go along with these things that I don't understand allows me to think that I'm kind of smart. <laughs> and then in the rehearsal hall, I mean, it was interesting for the people that had read it and had relationships with the book that, you know, some of us would be like, oh, did you cut that part out? Could we maybe find a way to put that back in, in a tiny little way? You know, that was my biggest thing of like, can I just find a way to work this in a little bit? Um, and of course, Tracy would be like, let's try it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so that was exciting because it was so collaborative to be able to, um, that she really, she really, really respected everyone's ideas. So if it was from a cut in the script to an idea of how, how to tesser, you know, she was really, really available to those ideas, so it's great. Rehearsal was deeply collaborative and we all had strong opinions. We were all very A+. plus. We really cared about this piece. We really wanted it to be the best it could be because I feel like no one's ever done this. To create, you know, young adult theater this exciting is, is I feel really proud about it. I'm really happy about it. Working on a new work like A Wrinkle in Time is always really challenging, but above all, super satisfying because you get to build something from the ground up. I think it's a really incredibly beautiful production. It's, it's not your everyday play. Most of us sit backstage and deeply listen to the piece because it's so brand new and we, we feel the audience. I mean, there are times where the audience is completely silent, deeply listening and it's breathtaking like in the camisots red eyes you can hear a pin drop and I and so we want to be as deeply listening as they are so in performance it's a lot of work because you can't kind of go backstage and open up the New York Times you have to be right there ready to go feet forward to jump off into this cliff and and the audience goes crazy I mean at the end and the end is so moving I find and so moving which I won't say what the end is but and I just, it's the audience and us, you know, helping Meg get home. It's just very moving. It's wonderful. I'm extremely proud of this production. I think it's unlike anything we've ever seen here and uh, I hope people enjoy it. Well, I'm absolutely honored to be a part of it, um, to have worked with Tracy Young on this project that was scary for all of us because somebody, you know, said, here's $10,000 to prove it can't be done. And um, we earned that $10,000 to say, oh, yes, it can. So we're really, really proud of it. And I love listening to it and reading it because we're backstage with those books and we read it every day. <laughs> and I'll continue to read it. <laughs> we actually did it. I can't believe it. I caught people wiping their eyes at the end of the show. So that's a good sign.